Good afternoon. I'm Ellie Sullivan, co-chair of the City Club Special Program Committee. Our program today highlights the work of Charlize Lyles and her personal story, including reflections related to her memoir, Do I Dare Disturb the Universe? From Projects to Prep School. By way of introducing Charlize's successor editor of Catalyst Ohio Magazine to the community, we have asked him in turn to introduce Ms. Lyles. Prior to joining Catalyst as editor, Keith Reed was a business reporter and economics contributor to various publications, including the Boston Globe and the Cincinnati Inquirer. In addition to editing Catalyst, he continues to write personal finance economics commentary on his blog, Keith Reed's Money Corner. He holds a degree in English from Coppin State University in Baltimore, Maryland. Please give our new Cleveland resident, Keith Reed, a warm City Club welcome. Thank you and good afternoon. I don't, I don't know if anybody here would have clapped that much if you knew that I was originally from Pittsburgh <laughs> before she introduced me as a new Cleveland resident. But if you're a fan of good football teams, you would have. I, bef before, I, before I introduce Charlize, I want to relay a quick anecdote about the work that Catalyst Ohio does, because she is really ultimately responsible for not only my coming to Cleveland, but for the work that Catalyst does as an institution. Uh, Catalyst is a 10-year-old magazine that covers public education, not only in Cleveland, but throughout the state of Ohio. Uh, and we really try to take a, an intense, independent, and in-depth look at public education funding, public education reform, uh, many of the, all of the efforts that go into making the public education system in the state of Ohio better for our students. One of the projects that we recently completed is a public opinion poll uh, of Ohioans' attitudes about the public education system. And some of the findings were a bit dismaying. For example, 64% of Ohioans said that they don't know enough to say whether or not the state Supreme Court has found uh, the system of funding public education throughout Ohio constitutional, unconstitutional, or, or not. Uh, the problem with that is that the state Supreme Court has found uh, funding in public education unconstitutional four times in the la over the last several years. So that's a big issue. Uh, we are going to actually have an event next Tuesday uh, that I would invite anyone to come to at Cleveland State University, uh, and you'll find flyers around the room about that event if you'd like to come out. Um, so thank you for, uh, for attending if you choose to come out and do so. Charlie Sliles is the co-founding editor of Catalyst Ohio. Before that, she was a columnist and editorial writer for several newspapers. She began her career as a clerk for the New York Times White House correspondent, Hendrick Smith. In 1987, she was part of a team that was awarded the Copeland Public Service Award for contributions to a series in the Virginian pilot uh, on poverty and low-income housing in an affluent city. Uh, and then I had, there is a list, a long and distinguished list of awards that Charlize has, uh, has won that I cannot read all of. But I, she did want me to mention that she was also a recipient of the Kiplinger Fellowship in Public Affairs Journalism uh, from the John Glenn School at Ohio State University. Uh, her memoir, 1995, Do I Dare Disturb the Universe? From Projects to Prep School was published by Faber and Faber. Uh, it, it was republished in 2007 by Gray Publishers Company. In 1999, she received the first of two, she received, she received two first and second place awards for best religion coverage from the Ohio Society of Professional Journalists for her work in the Dayton Daily News. She's also received Society of Professional Journalists Award for Best African American Series. In 1981, she earned, she received a Bachelor of Arts degree in English Literature from Smith College. She was born in Cleveland, Ohio, and lived in the Kennedy Estates Public Housing, Appro Public Housing Project. Uh, she <coughs> attended Dyke Elementary and Kennard Junior High Schools. She is a member of the Policy Bridge Advisory Board 
a Northeast Ohio think tank on African American issues, and the board of young audiences of Northeast Ohio. Please join me in giving a, a round of applause and a great welcome to Charlize Lyles. Thank you, Keith, for that wonderful welcome. And uh, good afternoon to everyone. I would like to um, thank the City Club Special Programs Committee, Elna Sullivan and Michael Kellstrom, for um, making this happen and all of the City Club staff. It's wonderful to be here, especially after being a part of the City Club um, for a couple of years working on putting together programs like this. Um, it's a real pleasure to be in this position as opposed to sitting out there where you are trying to think of a really hard question. <laughs> um, I um, want to dedicate my remarks today to um, my mentor, Daisaku Ikeda. He is a Japanese uh, Buddhist peace activist. And uh, there's an exhibit on display about his life and work at the Cleveland Clinic on this Thursday, along with the work of uh, Mohandas Karenjan Gandhi and uh, Martin Luther King. Um, my book, which I hope you will all buy, and enjoy and encourage others to do likewise. And I hope that you'll tell Oprah about it <laughs> and, and Tyler Perry about it and all those good folks who can make things happen. Tell them about it. Um, but my book is um, written in the genre of what I call African-American post-civil rights autobiography. And some examples of that genre are Barack Obama's Dreams from My Father. You know, I was going to figure out a way to connect with Barack Obama. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> We're all related. <laughs> um, another example is Patrice Gaines Carter's Laughing in the Dark, Lorene Carey's Black Ice, and uh, another Ohioan, Will Haygood's The Haygood's of Columbus. Most of these memoirs or autobiographies were published in the early to mid-1990s when a generation of African Americans who had clearly benefited from the fruits of the Civil Rights Movement began to reflect on the meaning of our experiences, personally and professionally, within the context of our country's ever-evolving saga of race. In Do I Dare Disturb the Universe from the Projects to Prep School, I parallel my personal trajectory as a girl growing up Afro and American on the cusp of a new era. I parallel that with the history of Cleveland, the Glenville race riots, the election of the first black mayor of a major American city, the black power movement, the desegregation of Cleveland schools, the failure of public housing, and some lots of triumphs as well. The uh, East Tech Scarabs, 1972 state basketball championship victory. I know East Tech is in the house. <laughs> um, and, and many, many other scenes from Cleveland's history, all intertwined with my own life. Um, like many children in Cleveland schools today, there were many, many things that I didn't have. Um, one wonderful thing that I did have and still have is a loving, strong, and very smart mother. With an, uh, and there she is right there. <laughs> a mother with an unbelievable capacity to work hard, three jobs sometimes, with five kids. An unwavering belief, and an unwavering belief that her children would have greater opportunity to gain access to the American dream and she also had an incredible ability to actively seek out opportunity for her children. Thank you 